Good morning, Jared. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? Fantastic. I'm very excited to have a conversation with you. And the reason why is because for a couple of decades now, in on iHeartRadio, in my daily writing, I have always spoken that the true geniuses of this modern day world are those who are coming from the street. Because you know survival, you know how to get out of things, and you know how to create conversations. And I just, I just think this is such a blessing to actually speak with somebody who has been to hell and doesn't want us to go in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I will. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored that, that that you'd say something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, we've experienced things that uh, no person can even imagine. And uh, it makes you appreciate the little things in life. And, and I just, you know, it's, it's completely changed my view on 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 being alive. To write a book, I know what that journey is like. That takes a lot of commitment, but it also requires sacrifice. Where did you find that inside your overcrowded heart? I just felt like it had to be told. I mean, I put, you know, I'm not incredibly educated. I'm not incredibly intelligent, uh, but this story just had to be told. And I just put everything I had in it and, and uh, I put years into it. And, um, you know, I rewrote it many times and then I was eventually lucky enough to get an agent and then I got a publisher and then I got, you know, they helped me with an editor and uh, I just kind of poured myself into it. And I really grew a lot during the process. And, uh, you know, got a better grasp of the English language. And, and uh, I don't know, the story just had to be told, I felt. One of, the, one of the things that I've always talked about is street speak. I mean, isn't there a language of its own when you're on the street? Yeah, there's all kinds of slang and, and there's all kinds of even like body language. And yep. you just, you know, it, it, it's you're you are fighting for your life on a daily basis. Uh, everyone could 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 help you or they could kill you. I mean, so there's just. Uh, you really have to dissect every sort of in between words of, of of what people are saying to you and try to you know read them and and figure out is this going to be a friend or a foe and because a foe is someone that you know you could actually end up dead. Mm. So many of us are, man, spoiled rotten when it comes to escaping the heat or escaping the cold. But you had to live in it. How do you mentally prep yourself for a situation like that? Well, drugs help a lot. Yes. Uh, drugs sort of numb you, and uh, you know, especially heroin. Heroin is just, or, or opiates in general, just numb you. So uh, it, it makes sleeping on concrete not that bad. Mm. Um, the weather, uh, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you you don't shower for for I mean, sometimes months at a time, and and uh, you, you know, you, you don't eat a decent meal, and you, you don't have a pillow, and you know, it's it's. Uh, you sort of just get used to it, to be honest. But uh, it's really the drugs. The drugs just just help tremendously in, in, in that regard. Mm. You know, you you, t- you talk about how, um, you know, not taking the baths and stuff like that. I know one of the things that we do at our grocery store here in Charlotte, our bathrooms are open for them to come and take a shower. We want them to take a shower. And, and, and we, because I believe that as a community, we embrace everything, all changes in all walks of life. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's that's. Uh, Listen, uh, where I live, there are like some access, there's access to like public showers and mm-hmm. things like that. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was on drugs, so I couldn't really uh, assess how dirty I was most of the time. Right. Um, and uh, also heroin sort of can sometimes, it doesn't really, it, it makes you like not sweat and it makes you not smell. And wow. uh, you kind of like lose, you lose a lot of aspects of being human, I guess. And, and, uh, you know, so you can sort of go longer without showering. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I took a lot of bird baths and public yeah. bathrooms and things like that. And, and uh, you know, once in a while you get lucky and you end up in the hospital or you, you end up in a mental institution, you get to take a nice hot shower. Yeah. The book we're talking about is Crooked Smile. Um, because I am a book author, that title is what gets the attention of a passerby in any bookstore or even if they're on Amazon. So what what led you to that to that name title? Oh, well, it's uh, the title can be interpreted maybe as corny, but uh, or metaphoric, but it's actually quite literal. I was homeless, uh, did a bunch of drugs and blacked out and woke up and uh, my face was pretty destroyed and I was actually missing part of it. Um, I don't still don't exactly know what happened but uh, you know i it appears that i got sliced with a knife and then did some damage on my own and i actually had to get reconstructive surgery on my mouth so i have some scarring 
And uh, that is where the title comes from. And uh, it, I mean, it's a little bit more interesting than that, but I, I won't spoil the book. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a, the, the title is literal. Yeah. Listeners need to know that they need to take their time in reading this book because your words are authentic. And it's not like sitting there watching 48 hours or some sort of documentary where they have painted this picture of what people of homelessness is all about or someone who's addicted to drugs. You, you are so authentic in the way that you write. I mean, your editor must have loved you. Um, well, to be honest, they, they, they gave me an editor and, and they, the editor sort of tried to rewrite the book. And then I sort of mm-hmm. said, you know, I, I, I don't want to do this. And, and, uh, I kind of fought with the publisher about that. And, and, and the book, the book actually wasn't heavily edited, um, at all. Um, that's why it's real. That's why it's real. Yeah, that's they, it. they, uh, you know, and listen, God, you know, God bless them and everything, but, uh, I, I didn't really want them to rewrite the book. And, um, so I don't know. Listen, it's not perfect. I'm not Shakespeare. I'm not, uh, you know, Thomas Pynchon or anything, but, uh, it's a pretty easy read. I'm not incredibly, I don't know. I don't consider myself like incredibly intelligent or, or good at prose or anything. It's, it's a pretty simple read, but it, it listen, there, there's some good stories in there and, and, uh, it's, it's, it's real, it's raw and it's from, you know, my heart. I can so relate with the story about the editor because on my second book, she did not want me to write the book the way that I did and she wanted to correct it. And so, but I begged her to stay on as the editor. And, but what she did in, it with, on the book cover, she spelled her name backwards so people wouldn't recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> listen, I, I had an editor. I actually paid an editor personally at first before I even had a book deal. And uh, he really helped me and he helped me restructure the He didn't really rewrite anything. He just helped me a, a bit with structure and some suggestions on a, on a future draft. And, 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 and he helped me tremendously. And then, and uh, n- nothing against the, the second editor that the publisher hired, but, um, you know, it was like, they were, they were like, Hey, the, you, you know, you're not really a professional writer and this person is, so let's just let them sort of like rework every sentence. And, and I, I didn't like that. And, and, uh, and they gambled and I really credit them with, uh, believing in me. And, and, uh, so far people are, are really liking the book so so I, I think they're they're I think we're all happy with with the way that 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 decision was made well you stick into your guns reminds me so much of Mark Twain Jared in in the way that Mark Twain said you have got to remain loyal to your to your accent and your writing is your accent so I mean I'm so proud yeah thank you I, I think that that's where they kind of came around and I you know because I said hey listen this is my voice and my voice may be imperfect but um this is not like a fictional story. This is sort of the story of my life. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's a very, uh, it's very graphic. It's a very graphic topic. And, uh, um, I really respect them in, 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 in ending up, uh, agreeing w- w- with my proposal to just sort of leave it most of it the the, the way that I I wrote it you know you say graphic but listeners need to know there's also some humor in there, Jared. I mean, you, you do some good stuff in there that make you go. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I try, I, listen, it, it's uh, it's 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 very dark subject matter, but oftentimes very dark things are very funny after the fact. And uh, I try to be funny and I try to be lighthearted. And and listen, so, frankly, it's just it is funny. It's funny when people it, drugs make people do incredibly stupid things mm-hmm. and act uh, not in their own self interest. And and hilarity often does ensue from that. Who is Michael Schellenberger? And and he, the, what he because he starts this book off. I mean, that's that's the way I stepped into this book. It's like, ooh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, Michael Schellenberger is a friend. Uh, frankly, he's much more famous than me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's just uh, well, he's an author. You know, he, he wrote a book called San Francisco mm. that uh, I was a really big fan of, and he sort of had some of the similar. He had similar ideas about how we address addiction and homelessness, and uh, and I was, and I'm actually a former homeless drug addict, so I reached out to him and said, "Hey, listen, I actually agree with it with everything you're saying, and I happen to have been homeless and addicted, and, and we sort of just struck up a friendship." and uh, you know, he, he's, he's, he's a lot smarter than me and a lot more accredited and, and he's written multiple books and, and, uh, he really helped me out, you know, and, 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 uh, we're just, we're, we're in, we're mostly in agreement about all these things. So he, he, uh, grace, graciously 
brought the forward to this book. Yeah. You use a word inside the book, Crooked Smile, that I, I, I kind of, I, I, was, I was taken back, but the, and the reason why is because it's such an old-fashioned word, but it, it, it says so much, and only because Rod Stewart was put in jail because of it. Vagrancy. You don't hear that word anymore, but you use it, and I knew exactly what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. I Well, I was a vagrant that... Uh, did a lot of vagrancy mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, or experienced a lot of vagrancy and uh not that we should com- like criminalize vagrancy or you know it, but but uh people have to be incentivized to, to 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 stop doing bad behavior and they have to be rewarded for good behavior and they have to be uh given a given a helping hand to put them on the path of good behavior um whereas now we're sort of just giving people a helping hand to continue bad behavior and uh that will only lead to more bad behavior and it it incentivizes uh self-destruction for thousands of people uh in the city that i live in and uh and that's you know i'm not some person that says we you know we have to we have to just lock everyone up and punish everybody Mm -hmm. but we we, know we have to provide the infrastructure for people to find a path or sometimes be nudged towards a path or maybe even mandated to a path of uh, living a vibrant, self-sufficient life. And and, and uh, we're just not doing that right now. I just wish that we had more listeners in the way that people would take the time to to listen to those who have, who've come from the street or are on the street. Because, I mean, Willie and I, I mean, every time I saw Willie, he would sit down and tell me about why he loves music and how he plays it on his guitar. And it's like, and he would play it for me. And it's like, I just wish people would take the time to learn, uh, learn another culture. Yeah. Well, I wish people that were in charge of making policies and, and ran this country would listen to a homeless per- or an ex-homeless person for once when a, when dealing with uh, drafting uh, policies around homelessness and addiction. Uh, they don't seem to do that. They like to listen to people that went to Harvard or have PhDs in social work and, you know, people that have never slept outside. And uh, at some point, we're going to have to start listening to people that slept outside if we're going to try to address the problem of you know, thousands of people that are sleeping outside right now. How did you keep yourself in a very down to earth level way of sharing the book where you weren't over preaching and you weren't over teaching that it's like, say it's almost like you've taken this, this Polaroid picture of your life and saying, here, here, here you go. Enjoy it. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't have an ego about it. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I mean, the, fortunately I have, well, you know, listen, I have a world-class education and being a, a scoundrel basically. Yeah. So, uh, I can, with that comes a bit of, of uh, you know, you can't really get on your high horse and, and scold people into listening to your experience of being a terrible person. So, uh, or a badly behaved person. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm humble. I'm just humble about it. Um, because uh, frankly, it's kind of an embarrassing thing to be an expert on. And, uh, you know, so I, 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 I'm, I try not to scold people in, in, into, into listening to me, but, but at the same time, I'm letting them know like, Hey, listen, uh, there's no schooling that you can get for this. There's no, uh, there's no degree that you can get in, in understanding this better than someone that actually lived it. Mm. But one thing that you have that so many people don't is that you have vision, vision in the way that you can recognize things that we don't see and before it even gets here. And that's, that's what I'm inspired by when it comes to you, Jared. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, 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 uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to really give the 360, you know, a, account of this, and uh, and it's not just about me, and it's not just about right. my experience. It's about like getting us out of this situation for thousands of people. And, and listen, I'm I'm very different than uh, the next guy that's been homeless. We're all different. We all we're, we're all very unique, and we all ended up in these places uh, for different reasons. And, and the solution for us getting out of this uh, may, may be different for every single individual, but, uh, you know, there's going to be some overlap and, and, and largely there's a lot of people out there that are suffering from addiction and mental illness. And, uh, and that, that is the reason why they're homeless. And, and, and we need to start addressing, addressing that and coming up with a comprehensive plan to get them out of it. Mm. Did you feel violated by what I call the professional people that are standing on street corners? In other words, they, they're, they're on there. They've got their, their signs. We, we give our dollars and we give food and water. And then they, when it, when it's all said and done, they go home in their fancy car. Um, I mean, I'm not offended by it. I mean, if, if people, you know, if people are going to hand them money, I mean, okay. that they're, 
they're going to hand the money. But uh, I don't I don't know how well that's working anymore. I mean, there's just such an abundance of homeless people at this point that I, I think the and also, you know, people are don't really carry cash anymore. Uh, you know, I, I just, you know, but the, the, are, are there are there grifters? Sure. I mean, I was one. I mean, I th- there were times that I actually wasn't homeless. Technically, I was just on drugs and would pretend to be homeless and, and beg for change or give people sob stories at gas stations and ask for money. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's it, oftentimes if someone gives you a sob story at a gas station, I mean, I don't, just in my experience, most of the time they're, they're probably not telling the whole truth and they, 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 there might be an underlying issue of addiction. After this book, I, I'm going to put this in the universe, Jared. I would love for you to write stories about, you know, where, where you can just create some novels and, and you know, be about other people of homelessness that, that really that, that don't exist, but yet inside your books they do because you've got that experience inside your soul to be a storyteller. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think I, I could definitely I could definitely see myself going down that path. And I've just met so many interesting characters out there on the street that I think that I could I could find inspiration to form my own my own characters Absolutely. and, and uh, my own stories about 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 this subject. Um, yeah, because I guess real life experience is what fuels uh, someone's ability to, to, to sort of create a universe of stories. Absolutely. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Jared. I love just listening to your soul. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm honored. I, I, yeah, I'd love to come back. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today? Okay. Okay. Thank you. You too.